Are you being serious, man? Yeah? Well, he had this to say in response to that man, that House of Prep member. The president has given very special attention to Ministry of Works. And that's why in 2023 supplementary, he approved 300 billion to take care of a number of palliatives. By next week, we are going to publish what success we have achieved in those uh, 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 300 billion projects. We used it to procure over 330 roads, uh, palliatives, and uh, um, bridge repairs, which were properly procured and uh, properly executed. Today, we have achieved over 85% completion. And so when we publish it, I want him to go there if he can leave his uh, oversight in FEMA and he can go and check this project. And I'm going to put, we have done tremendously very well in a number of our projects. Of course, there is no amount of resources that can fix 2,604 projects in one year. We've terminated over 10 projects following due process. Some of them have lasted 70 years, 18 years. And so we are doing very, very well. The president. That's the Avluma. It's done very, very well. It's just that this house of representative people, eh? Don't mind them all. They want to collect contracts. And because I'm not giving them contracts, that is why they're asking me all this. I'm above them. He didn't say that there. He said that after leaving the room. Yeah, he said, I am above them. I am I'm, I'm, I'm above all these guys who are asking me these questions. The reason why they ask me all these questions is because uh, I, I, I suspect that they are part of the contractors who are looking for contracts, but because we didn't give them contracts, that's why they are now angry. That's why he said, but well, he didn't say that to their faces there. So I'm looking forward to when he's going to publish what they use the 300 billion era for. In 2024 budget, the Ministry of Works alone, they have a budget of over 1.4 trillion naira. And this is uh, October 2024. So far, so good. It's not only 300 billion naira contract, I mean, sorry, supplementary, supplementary budget that uh, the volume you will need to give account of. It will need to give account for the uh, 1.4 to 1.6 trillion naira that I also got approved for him in 2024 budget. I'm not looking forward to it, though. I'm just saying. That's if they spend that money on your roads, you will know. Abi, won't you? All of now with the drive around Nigeria, you will know. But they are starting uh, 700 kilometer, 1,400 to and fro to Calabar. 1,000 kilometer, 2,000 to and fro, 2,000 kilometers to and fro, Shokoto to Badagri. And they are keeping all of that in secret, Abi. And you believe they are intending to actually really build that? I right. Well, let's move on. Okay. In their House of Representatives, they have started to what they call the probing of uh, the approved license for Oledepo, sorry, Oyedepo, Kenan Land private airstrip. I remember when Pulapenga was asking me this question, like. Sorry, my I don't understand. I mean, see this this airport. I mean, this uh, uh, airstrip. Is it going to be like airport that you know? Uh, Oledepo, sorry, Oledepo is just going to be flying in and out. Nobody's going to be checking like airports. No man, no man. I say, yeah, it's called private airstrip. What does that even mean? I say, well, it's private. Private means. And it's not the only one. So the House of Rep says they want to probe it now. It was uh, approved by uh, Rodstars Otobo Keyamo. And in their debate on the matter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your protection. Um, aware that the federal government, through the Minister of Aviation and Aerospace, Festus Keyamo, confirmed the approval of an airstrip for a religious-based organization in Ota Ogun State. Recall that in September 2014, a prominent religious leader was linked 
with a private jet used to convey $9.3 million in cash to South Africa for purchase of arms. The private jet was seized by the South African authorities, uh, which has two, two people, Nigerian and an Israeli, on board. Concern that currently experienced, uh, the current uh, experience of uh, security challenge that Nigeria is facing through illegal importation, proliferation of firearms and ammunition, importation of illicit hard drugs, coupled with the inability of our security agencies to pinpoint the source of supply of weapons to insurgents, kidnappers, and separatists that have massacred thousands of Nigerians across the country. Worried that granting airstrip to private individuals and organizations would aid illegal importation of firearms and hard drugs into the country, thus heightening insurgency, kidnapping, banditry, and other vices that are seriously affecting the socio-economic development of, of the country. The House resolves to, one, call on the Ministry of Aviation and Aerospace to stop issuance of airstrip licenses to private individuals and organizations, and also withdraw approvals already granted to private individuals and organizations with a view to safeguarding national security. Two, urge the committees on aviation and legislative compliance to ensure compliance. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Any second observation, Mr. Observation? Speaker? Yes, sir. Uh, please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and distinguished colleagues. My name is Honorable Shino Ereji. Um, I represent the people of Isai, Tesuwajo, Kajola, and the Wajo of Federal Constituency. Um, observation is this. Uh, um, I believe initially the minister was even wrong in giving an approval for an airstrip. This is supposed to be the duty of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. So we need to even look, it, look at it from that angle. The approval given by the minister is even defective and is not meant to be. Because the approval for airstrip airport is supposed to come from Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, who is domiciled with the power to do so. It's not domiciled at the ministry. It is, after the approval of, it is after the approval of the NCAA that the minister can give such an approval. So even giving that kind of approval is, a, is an abuse of power. So I want this house to please see how we can actually look at all this. There are so many things going on in ministry, in the, I mean, that industry right now that we really need to look into. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I... Well, I accept your contribution, but we also need to be mindful that um, the Nigeria Civil Aviation uh, Authority is under the Ministry of uh, Aviation. So by implication, we, I want to believe perhaps the minister has uh, done the due diligence by accepting all the, I mean, collecting all the necessary approvals before he made the announcement. But however, since the resolution of this motion, or the prayer, is to order the Committee on Aviation to investigate on this matter, I think uh, they can also take note of that particular aspect to ensure that in the first place, whether due process has been followed or not. So I think we can take a seconder to the motion, or have we done so? Honorable uh, Namdi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Excellency, Honorable Nam Desich is my name, and I represent in Dokwa, Okwa and Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I'm from Delta State. I rise here this morning to second the motion, ably moved by my dear former brother from PDP. I so second. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. The eyes have it. This motion is referred to the Committee on uh, Aviation for Further Legislative Action. Yeah, concern is legit, like yours, Polapenga. That anything can happen, all right, when private year strip is given to uh, you know, to private uh, sort of uh, citizens. 
in this case, Kena land. For somebody now referring to when um, a private jet owned by a pastor in Nigeria, Pastor Urishi Jaffo, that got uh, confiscated in South Africa where they wanted to go and buy arms. And that is not totally or the correct story. So I am just going to clear that for us. In 2014, when Good Luck Egbere Jolantan was routing and routing this uh, full army, sorry, with this uh, Boko Haram terrorists, that was also the moment that they were putting together the APC. So APC, Ebekebe of Atifku, Bokwari, Saraki, Tifnumbu, Layamo, uh, Keneridino, as like the list is long. They were running propaganda day and night against uh, Jonathan. In fact, it was uh, generally publicized that Jonathan eh, killing the Boko Haram terrorists was uh, killing the northern Nigeria. Yes. They said if uh, the Niger Delta militants could get amnesty, why couldn't Jonathan give the Boko Haram terrorists amnesty rather than be killing them and killing them? So, their propaganda machine traveled as far as America. That is why so many people would never like uh, the Democrats. I know some of you will be like, and I say not the Democrats say, say make everybody go vote for. No, 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 no. Some of you suffer from what is called Stockholm Syndrome. Election interference. Barack Obama and his wife, the entire Democrats, that I call them the demonic rats. To this day, I still call them that, right? The demonic rat of America. They invested so much in Nigeria election, in the formation and the empowerment of the terrorist group called APC, Ebekebe, from the incubation. Yes. What did they do? Hmm? Barack Obama placed an arm embargo on Nigeria when the fight against the Boko Haram terrorists was hottest because the Fnumbu, Boko Hari, the northern governors, the Aemias, the Sultan, all of them, they wrote a very powerful petition and they sent a powerful delegation to America that Good Luck Igbere Jolantan was amassing weapons to destroy the north and kill his opposition. Obama agreed. Yeah. It was around the time they killed, uh, remember, it was around the time they killed Gaddafi too. So they were so invested in Africa, including this uh, Hillary Clinton and the rest of them back then. They were so invested in Nigeria that Omo, the ASTIO, the this and that too, including the Amonio, they invested so much in Nigeria politics and Nigeria election that gave birth to this APC. So it's not, it's not only that uh, Barack Obama eh, influenced what later became the Shibok kidnapping. They orchestrated it enough that eh, Abba, they placed their embargo on Nigeria. No country must sell arms to Nigeria. They won't sell to Nigeria. Nigeria needed weapons to face this Boko Haram and clear them. You remember General Aziza? Eh? Do you remember him? So then they said, Jonathan, that anybody that sells weapons to Jonathan, that Jonathan was trying to extinguish his political opposition ahead of 2015 elections so that he can perpetuate himself in power. And what did America do? America placed the embargo, arms embargo on Nigeria. No country must sell weapons to Nigeria. No country. Nigeria needed weapons. They couldn't get from anywhere. So they had to go through the black market. Black market. 
the northern Nigeria they've already concluded, Jonathan must go. He must go. Whatever it's going to take, he must go. They can't stand him for another four years. So Jonathan bought the idea of, let's go to South Africa. South Africa also manufactured weapons. The whole deal was done. The arrangement was there. They were going to pay in cash so that America will not intersect that money. You know, if you want to buy things like that, you have to transfer money and all that. Legit. But America embargo means any, any country that Nigeria transfer money to, they will, they will seize the money. So they had to take cash under the cover of uh, all these uh, pastors, religious leaders who flew the cash. It was all done like, okay, you know what? They won't suspect anything like this. There were South African mercenaries who were also helping to fight the terrorists in Nigeria then. Immediately, the Americans heard about it. They threatened South Africa. That's what happened. And who threatened them? Barack Obama. The Barack Obama's White House threatened South Africa with sanctions. If you sell weapons to Nigeria, you'll be sanctioned. So South Africa got that and they were like, you know what? America told us to confiscate this whole thing. The money you brought in, the aircraft you brought into our country. They didn't fly to South Africa to go and buy guns on the roadside though. It was so, supposed to be bought from the uh, South African government. It was the deal between two countries, but without the uh, America being aware of it. But they finally got to the window of it. What did they do? They confiscated it. The money, the aircraft, and it became news in Nigeria. Guess those who amplified it, Tifnumbu and his media, they amplified it in Nigeria. Ah, they've arrested Orishi Jaffo in South Africa. They want to come and buy weapons, weapons to kill oppositions. That was the last stroke that broke the camel's, camel's back for, for Jonathan. That he knew was like, you know what? You can't win this. He did an interview on that and said, they invested so much. Baba, Barack Obama's campaign manager eh, is the APC, Ebeke Ebe Strategies. Eh? I can't remember his name right now. I used to remember his name all the time then when I used to talk about them. They sent his own campaign manager to become APC strategist, propagandist. All of the messages, how they turned all you young, young people then against your country, Nigeria, for APC, for this jihadist. And when they took over power, all the mercenaries that were helping Nigerian army to go after the terrorists and all that back then, they chased them out of Nigeria. They started telling you that uh, Boko Haram has been uh, neutralized. Boko Haram has been this and that. The rest is history today. You are now battling with uh, the Fulani terrorists that have killed over 60,000 people in eight years of Boko Haram. America now stayed away. They 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 stayed so that's why you will see so many people who see up their who see up their brain today that it's not because they love uh, Donald Trump per se. Some of them don't even like America. But every time they see Donald Trump, they always see him as uh, the nemesis of uh, the what Obama did. Obama and his gang they derailed Nigeria's progress. A country that was then linked uh, that was then rated as uh, one of the three fastest growing economies in the world today is the poverty capital of the world. So I'm not saying that those of you are Democrats, so you don't have, I mean, you can rub, brush it aside. No, that's, that's not the only, my ego, that's not the reason. I know you are not new to me. All right. It doesn't mean that uh, people like us are kind of like fancying the, the, the Republicans or your Democrats or whatever it is. But you see, fact is fact. You understand? All this election interference, eh? America, the Democrats, interfered in a Nigerian politics, in Nigeria's election. They didn't have to come and force people to vote. It was easier. The propaganda of APC, locally and internationally, Jonathan was presented as the weakest person. The weakest. Anybody but Jonathan. He was the weakest. He's a drunkard. He's, uh, he's corrupt. He's this and that. Last, last thing. Look at the people who are no corrupt. Look at the people who are strongest. 
Eh, look at them. Look at Nigeria today. Eh, nine years after that, look at Nigeria today. More divided, war, eh, more terrorized today. Well, where is America? Where is uh, Obama? Where is the Democrat today in all of this? You are on your own. But that won't change the history. Let's just be honest with ourselves. Okay? It won't change anything that has already happened. Because Nigeria is already down, 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 down. And it's probably going to continue to go down, down, down with this APC. Now that you have uh, the CIA asset, the Knumbu as their president, the druggy, that again, eh? Joe Biden of America, the Democrat of America, when it was time to expose this drug dealer, this Tifnumbu drugie, the time to expose a, a, a certificate forger, what did America do? A Democrat judge in Chicago, a Democrat judge in Chicago decided to redact the Tifnumbu's uh, criminal record. Don't be so. Eh? So if you think People are just emotional. They, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Donald Trump hates them, this and that. Well, you can fancy whatever you say. A lot of people who knows what the damage is, the destruction of Nigeria by the Democrats, by Obama and their gang. Eh? There's nothing you can say to them that will change the facts. That's the truth. Hmm? I just thought that you had that. Because, yeah, Nigeria is done for. What can anybody do anymore? It's done for. So in that same mass of, uh, so yeah, for that class of rep guys talking about the, the plane of a pastor trying to go and buy weapons in South Africa, that is not just the old story. Let's just say the old story as it is, because that's ex what really happened was that uh, America placed the embargo on Nigeria. In the time, the most crucial time of Nigeria war against terror, America didn't stand with Nigeria. He didn't support Nigeria. They did everything to make sure that that government of good luck is totally destroyed, weakened, all for this terrorist, this jihadist, APC, to come and destroy Nigeria. Look at it today. They succeeded. They have succeeded. By the time they are done, maybe Nigeria will be like Sudan, uh -huh. Somalia, and all these places. And they will be happy. So Nigeria will never become a regional power in Africa or anywhere that will one day become like, eh, we want to be the new China or something. It will soon happen. It will totally collapse eventually. And America will remain, won't it? So in the same House of Assembly, I mean, the National Assembly, this, also, this guy also decamped to a PDP uh, lawmaker, decamped to APC on record. Party to the All Progressive Congress APC with immediate effect. Your Excellency, my decampment from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressive Congress was as a result of the lingering and unresolved internal and external crisis within the People's Demo uh, Democratic Party. It is noteworthy to state here that the People's Democratic Party have two chairmen in my constituency Gwimi and Bukui Imperial constituency. One was unconstitutionally removed, while the other decamped with me. Hence, the party lacks structure in my constituency, and this has made it possible for me to provide good representation and prompt delivery of dividends of democracy to my constituents. It is in view of the foregoing that I'm officially informing you of my decampment from the Point People's of, Democratic Party to the order. Point of order. Please accept Point the assurances of, of my highest esteem and regards. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Line, Honorable Dr. Suleyman Abubakar Gumi. Honorable Point. Gumi, can you stand up for recognition? Mr. Speaker, the Point of order. Of the biggest and greatest party in Africa. Congratulations. Point of Welcome order, Mr. Board. Speaker. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. What point do you have, uh, the leader? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very grateful, my dear colleagues. Ish. Today, we are all talking about the contraption to what it is done to be 
we should always remember how Nigeria got to this stage. Don't ever forget. All right? Don't ever forget that. It's unfortunate. You know? There's no way I'm going to talk about this, that it won't be like uh, I'm speaking in favor of the Republicans or Donald Trumps and all of that stuff. Sure you get. But I discovered that uh, sometimes we just have to say what is the real truth. Because the projection that APC uses in Nigeria is uh, very much like that of what the Democrats does in America. Eh? What they tell you that somebody is going to do is what they are doing. What they are doing is what they are going to tell you that somebody else is going to do. They project it in that way. They demonize others of what they are actually doing. And that's how you see somebody that will say, uh, what do you call it? The, the Republicans, uh, no, no matter who wins, between them, the policy of uh, uh, the Republicans and the Democrats is the same. I kind of would beg to disagree. I would kind of beg to disagree. These guys didn't mean well for us. It's so, it's so bad that, honestly 